Redacted Editor here. I decided to start watching some anime in dubbed whenever I'm doing these speed paints. It just gives me something to focus on. So I started watching Pokemon. When I was a kid, I would watch the episodes as they came on Cartoon Network, but they would be random episodes. They wouldn't be in order, or perhaps I didn't watch them in order. Anyway, I've never actually seen the entire series from beginning to end, so I decided to actually start. I know it's over 200 episodes, at least this first section of it, but I figured I'd just watch it. I also forgot to mention the thumbnail for this episode, this episode breakdown, or not episode breakdown, for the actual episode. I drew at random. I just took it from a still shot because I didn't think of one. This episode was not one that I had in the story. It's just I always had this idea and I was like, okay, sure, I'll just throw this in. That's it. Hello. It's been about six months since the last episode breakdown recording. Of course, in that time I've been editing it and adding the subtitles. I just finished finally adding the closed captions for that one, so we should be all good to move forward. I'm going to probably skip. This may, I know I say this every time, but this may end up being the shortest one. I have talked at length about the most common ways techniques that I use for this, so I don't feel like I need to keep rehashing them. So we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. I'm already pausing. So I made this because I was listening to this song that you're currently hearing. I was listening to this while I was at the gym. I really like the cover that Samuel Kim made of this, as I do most of his covers, and I decided to incorporate it into the ongoing series. I I knew that I wanted to explain how Universe 7 was able to survive against other universes despite the fact that they were stated to be the weakest. So more or less I decided that this would be a continuation of how power is an absolute mentality that I've been trying to show. In a minute we'll talk about how the entire Omniverse is also geared against them. I also tried a new approach to combining music with the voices in this one. Instead of keeping the music low enough for the voices to be heard at all times, I decided to try and make the music quieter when someone's talking and then bring the volume back up. It felt like it worked out pretty well, but it kind of stood out in some places. So see if you can hear how this is different, how this episode is different than those that came before this. It also is the method I used in episode 3, which we'll talk about next time. The narrator is the guy from Universe 9 who was really annoying. I used the voice for Beetle, of Beetlegeuse from ReZero because just like Attack on Titan, ReZero has stretches of anime where there's no music or there aren't a lot of background noises. It's a lot easier to extract voices from anime like that, and I'll mention another one coming up in just a little bit. Finally, the, tourn the Tournament of Power has three different skies. The first third of the tournament has this dark sky that you're seeing. The second part has a green sky when half the warriors are eliminated. And the third part has a purple sky around the time Jiren starts fighting seriously. I did my best to keep all the clips in the same sky segment because I feel like it'd be very distracting for people if I kept jumping between different skies. Okay. So one thing that I want to point out, this is outside the scope of the actual episode, but I, as I was making more and more videos, I have done my best to reorganize 
how my files are for, are placed so that it's easier for me to find them. So I keep deleting and throwing away and finding and removing and replacing files over and over again. So for this one, I couldn't find the song that I used in the second half of the video. Of course, it's going to be, I could just go and find it and re-download it and use it again, but that, that takes effort. We're trying to speed run this episode breakdown. So you'll hear uh, at some point the song won't be proper. And if you're interested in hearing the actual song that was used at that point, you can go and watch the original, which I encourage you to do after each of these episode breakdowns. In this episode, I didn't actually have a title. I threw this on randomly. Um, I decided I would use the hero arrives to try and further the theme of Goku being the villain. We've seen the villain's origin story, how he came to power. So now let's see how the hero gall gallantly arrives to save the day. I tried to find shots where people were looking. I'm going to move my notes over to the side. I was trying to find shots where people looked villainous, like how Frieza here has red eyes, but there aren't all that many. There's also, I can't remember, I think it's here. I think Frieza originally is talking. Let's see. Yeah, Frieza's originally talking. I just covered it up as best I could. Looking back, I didn't do too terrible a job. There's just that one part right here that you can see something's moving but aside from that not too bad if you have headphones on you just noticed how the sound moved from one side to another again i like adding small details and sound directionality is one of my favorite details to add I removed some characters talking throughout the episode, and this one, Vegeta is normally talking, but I needed my narr narrator to be talking. I didn't need Vegeta to be talking. Thinking back now, I in the moment, this seemed like a very big deal to me, and I needed to remove Vegeta talking so people wouldn't get confused. Looking at it now, it really wasn't that big a deal. But if you look closely at this segment, especially at Vegeta's mouth, you'll, especially on the YouTube version, you'll see that his mouth isn't perfectly synced up. It's actually kind of floating around. That's just because whenever I upload it to YouTube, it doesn't look as pretty and as nice as it does when I'm editing it. Okay, you could actually see it there. So, I figured one of the reasons that Universe 7 is surviving so well, despite the fact that they were said to be the second weakest, is for two reasons. One, I'm pretty sure at some point it was stated that the reason the Universe 7 was deemed to be the weakest is because Frieza went around collecting the strongest people for his army and killing anyone who wouldn't join him or anyone else who would fight him. So overall, this brought the level of power in the universe. It brought the average down. However, there are still strong individuals like Goku, uh, Gohan, Piccolo, all of them. It's a little odd that they're so heavily concentrated in on Earth, but I think it just goes to show how much Frieza really screwed over their universe that there aren't really, maybe there would have been stronger people on other planets had he not gone around massacring like how he did. The other thing is that while the Earthlings are probably still weaker than the other aliens, they have a way of fighting other foes. They have a way of fighting stronger foes, and they do this through their techniques, which we'll talk about in a moment. <laughs> 
Tian's pose right there had me laughing so hard when I was editing because it wasn't at first it wasn't intentional that it lined up perfectly with the music. It just it formed it fitted really well. As I'm listening back to this, I think because the music got messed up, it makes this sound a lot different. Some of these sound effects are louder than they should be. Anyway, I did go back at some point and slow it down so that it perfectly matched the music, but originally it was just so close that I kept laughing because it wasn't intentional at first. In this episode, we also have the entire Omniverse banded together to take out Universe 7, as opposed to it just being a general battle royale. To me, it made more sense for everyone to be upset at Universe 7 specifically, rather than just, oh no, we have to protect our universe, all right, let's just fight randomly. No, you guys can settle that after you've taken care of the people who put you in this situation to begin with. It also greatly increases the amount of stress that Universe 7 has to face because everyone is fighting them. All right, so here we start to finally peel back the layers. How is it that Universe 7 managed to survive when everyone is fighting against them all at once? Well, in the original Dragon Ball, we really focused on techniques in addition to strength and speed. It wasn't just, I'm the strongest and the fastest, therefore I win. And I wanted to see a return of that. I really liked how they brought back the evil containment wave, especially. Aside from that, I wanted the Earthlings to have a place at the table. Even though they're not as strong or as fast as everyone, there are techniques both in the anime and in real life where you use your opponent's strength against them. I figured that this would give them a way of fighting against bigger, stronger foes. So this is kind of backed up by, you know, Frieza's existence. Aliens and other universes don't need technique. They have their brute strength and their sheer speed to overwhelm their opponent. Think about Frieza never did any training in Dragon Ball, right? And that's because he didn't need to. What point was there in doing training when you were so far and above everyone else that any of your attacks instantly one hit KO them. Think about if you were playing Fighter Z, like that video where Videl has realistic health. If you can actually take someone down in three hits, you're never going to one, want to develop any techniques, and two, need to develop any technique. Three, nor could you develop any technique because there's no one who's able to survive long enough for you to actually get some good training in. At most, maybe, he refined his death beam so that it would be smaller, that way people would leave more of a body that would show, that would be left behind to make people afraid, but that's really just conjecture. The Earthlings, however, had to invent martial arts because they were stronger opponents and they couldn't just yell and increase their key and power. They, in fact, they didn't have key for a lot of uh, original Dragon Ball. Or at the very least, I mean, they had like Kamehameha wave, sure, but they did, and they 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 had flying, but that was later into Dragon Ball. They still had to use things like after image technique. They still had to use their own strength, their own techniques to fight. This was just a random one I added. I needed a third reason. Things go best in threes. So I needed something to finish out the list. Unlike the other universes, the characters here all know one another. So you could... Well, that was the argument I gave. In this one, again, Frieza removed a lot of the strong warriors in other parts of the universe. So a lot of the strongest universes... A lot of the strongest warriors were from Earth. That means that they had a lot more history with one another because their stories were a part of one another. 
I figured that other universes, except for Universe 2, where you have the Pride Trooper, other universes would just grab, hey, I see your power level is the strongest in this region of the galaxy. I'm just going to grab you. And that's it. They don't have any coordination. If I were to remake this upcoming part, I would actually add the voices of the characters screaming. I also really like this part. It, the reason I didn't originally is because I didn't have voice lines for any of these characters, especially for Roshi, because he's not in Xenoverse 2. Now that I have more voice lines, I could actually get that taken care of. One thing this That sound effect is from Samurai Jack Season 4, Season 5, I don't remember which episode, but I remember when I was watching Samurai Jack, this is long ago when Season 5 was actually coming out, I thought to myself, oh, I don't know how they made that sound effect, I don't know how to describe that sound effect, I don't even, this is, I think before I even started adding sound to my videos, I said to myself, I don't even know where I would put this or how I would describe this. Well, I ended up getting it and I called it whoosh transition. I did my best in this upcoming part to make Universe 7 look as villainous as possible so that G uh, Jiren, by comparison, looks as heroic as possible. This is a brutal all-out war where an unimaginable, an unimaginable amount of people are going to be erased. You also notice the music change here. I actually wanted to use the second song throughout the entire episode, but it moved too quickly, and I didn't have it didn't have the right speed for the story I wanted to tell early on. However, again, I don't think I didn't go and get that original song, so we're gonna hear something probably real interesting. Yeah. I'm just going to go, what I'll do, alright, editing, redacted, you're up, I'm going to just play this like normal, for me, and when it comes time to edit, I'll just edit in the actual video with the actual music instead. This voice here, hopefully Future Me did a really good job of editing. You won't even notice when I've paused and when I've unpaused. But regardless, this this is Mirko chan from the anime of the same name. This was, I was making this around the same time that anime was coming out and I decided to save it because just like ReZero and Attack on Titan, it has a lot of good clear voices where there's no other background sound or music going on. Even better, it has a lot of female voices, which Dragon Ball doesn't have a lot of women. Yeah, Dragon Ball doesn't have a lot of women who talk a lot, a wide cast of women. It has Bulma, she talks a ton. It has Chi Chi, it has Android 18. I'm struggling to think of other, Videl is there for a bit. Well, that's about it. This voice, again, is meant to be Kale, but I use Nami's voice from One Piece because I wanted to, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of you weebs, actually know the word for save me, daskete. So, at least I feel that way because I actually know it, and it's not like I was 
I'm not going out of my way to learn Japanese. So, so I wanted one where someone actually said, save me. But I didn't know anywhere else that people actually said it. I just remembered in One Piece when Nami begged Luffy to save her village from Arlong. Now that someone is begging for help, all these cries for help, now, finally, the hero can arrive to save the day. The music becomes much more triumphant. Also, it, it sucks that you guys don't get to hear what I'm hearing. I'm just hearing all the hard work I put in with the voice lines and the sound effects without the music. It's kind of interesting to go back and hear this without anything, but... Unfortunately for you guys, I try too hard, so you're going to hear the edited version where everything is correct. Unless, of course, I end up deciding not to do that, in which case, I just made a fool of myself. few things. One, you notice the ground is already scuffed up. I took these sections of videos from when Jiren and Goku already were going all out fighting one another. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, they were fighting and then the ground was getting all messed up because of it. One thing that you'll notice is that this is after Goku already turned Super Saiyan Blue then powered down, then powered back up. That didn't really make much sense to me, so I did my best to cut it out and make it look as it does now. I had wanted to use a part where Goku was up high and then he jumps down because he's just watching the battle and he's like, no, I see, I'm keeping my eyes on the prize. I see the big strong over there. I'm going to go fight him. But I think he was Super Saiyan Blue, then he powered down, then he jumped down, then he powered back up. It didn't make much sense. You'll also notice that these two screams are my Wilhelm screams for Goku. I use them, or use them a lot in my early ones because these were the only two screams I had for Goku. Take a listen to them. You'll notice them a lot. Actually, now that I think about it, I think this was actually a new screen. I allowed reluctant to be the last word to disappear here because I really wanted to drive home. Jiren doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to fight. I would have liked if I could have had the post credit scene from episode one at this point, but I didn't want to delete the first episode and re-upload it, so I left it as is. And that's it. That's everything that I wanted to talk about for this. I don't really have anything more to say. I'll go through and draw the thumbnail. Let's take a look at my time. Currently, I'm at 23 minutes. We did it. We finally got it under an hour. Woo! Hooray! So, I'll go through, I'll edit this out, and then I'll... I'm still working on... Well, actually, I'm not really... Vegeta speedruns the Boo Saga. I haven't made any progress on that. I'm still about halfway through done adding the voice lines, and I still need to add the post credits, but I'm trying to make these videos first so that when I put out Vegeta speedruns the Boo Saga, I can have the episode breakdown for that come out at the same time. That's about it. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to go edit this. Have a good one.